a very good uh, afternoon everyone we welcome you all to the webinar on the topic responsible financing organized by the banking financial services and insurance board of the institute of cost accountants of india today and we are really honored and privileged to have with us as our eminent speaker today cma dr p sivarama prasad sir he is the former assistant general manager of the state bank of india we are also honored with the presence of our chairman sir cma chitranjan chatopadhyay sir cma dibendu roy sir additional director and hod of the bfsi board of the institute of cost accountants of india and other official bfsa officials of our department so we welcome all of you so just uh, before we start we are playing the institute anthem and then we will continue with the program Sadu ma sadu ga maya, tamasu ma jyoti ga maya, mrityur ma mritang ga maya. Sadu ma sadu ga maya, tamasu ma jyoti ga maya, mrit. so our chairman sir cme chitranjan chattopadhyay sir he will be joining very soon so now i would like to introduce uh, our speaker today cme dr p sivarama prasad sir sir is a qualified professional in cost accountancy company secretary finance commerce insurance and banking with experience of 36 years in banking and financial services with cross cultural experience and good knowledge in the insurance sector He is a fellow member of ICSI, the Indian Institute of Banking and Finance, Insurance Institute of India, and the Institute of Cost Accountants of India. He is uh, the former AGM of SBI, and he is our faculty of our various courses of our BFSI board. So we welcome you, sir. So now I will request our speaker, CMA Dr. P. C. Varma Prasad, sir, for his presentation. So good evening to all. i am dr p sivaram prasad so today's topic is on responsibility financing that the responsibility financing is a need of our in the country today today i am in hyderabad it is 34 like that hot hot if at all i want to go outside it is very difficult for me and uh, all these things i will discuss in detail once the sari is inaugurated thank you very much to all the participants thank you sir uh, sir i would request uh, sir to continue because uh, chairman sir will be joining soon very shortly so when he will join i will request sir for his address sir till now please sir you please continue sir shall i continue madam yes sir uh, you please continue Please continue. Then, Chairman Sir will join. I will hand over 
Okay. To stop. Okay. okay. Please uh, intimate to me so sure, that I will sir. stop. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. So, good evening to all. Today's topic is a burning topic. This is not only useful to the present generation and the next future generation selves. Everywhere, lot of problems are there on account of our climate change. And the bankers are financing to all the sectors in the economy. Without financing, there is no growth. So that's why while financing to various sectors, banks are also take responsibility whether that product is giving any emissions created and damages to the ecosystem or not. That is to be verified before financing to the any unit, whether it is in agriculture or industries or service sector like that. All these things I will discuss in detail. And the Reserve Bank of India also recently they have issued ESG guidelines. Particularly whenever the banks are giving loans, they have to look into whether that particular product, product means the loan product is damaging the ecosystem or not. If at all they are damaging, going to damage, then banks should not finance that product. The banks has to take responsibility. Even though it is a commercial bank, the main objective is a profit, profit with the growth. But uh, once they are aiming for profit, uh, the ecosystem should not uh, damage. That is called the responsible financing. Dubai, the city of gold. Everybody knows Dubai, the city of gold. Rain havoc caused a heavy rainfall. Some of the people that are telling it is a cloud seeding. Some of the people it is not a cloud seeding. It is a climate change. Across the globe, the heat waves are going on. So experts are also telling in future the survival is a question mark. But the banks are giving loans. Once they are giving loans, definitely the borrowers they are creating some environmental problems also. To arrest that one, while giving the lending, they should ensure whether it is an eco-friendly or eco-damaged product or not. For this also, good number of opportunities in the coming days, particularly for cost and management accountants, the pre and post audit of the various loans after threshold limit. Particularly, take for example, the credit audit is there. Once the loan is sanctioned, whether the credit or book debts audit is there, so the CMS are eligible for that and they will verify whether inventory is maintained properly or not, whether the stock statement produced properly or not, whether the data are real data or not, whether the stocks are insured properly or not, all these things whenever they are auditing the Credit and uh, particularly the inventory and stock audit. My data audit in the coming days, the environmental audit. Before giving the loan, whether uh, that loan is uh, to be sanctioned or not, whether it is uh, dangerous to the ecosystem or not, or even after giving the loan also, whether the borrower is uh, creating any damages, whether it is uh, air pollution or sound pollution or uh, the water pollution, whatever the various pollutions are there and the carbon emissions are not to be created. So that's why the banks are the backbone to the economy. That's why the Reserve Bank of India, the International Monetary Fund also given suitable instructions across the globe about the responsible finance. You see, one week back on, Heavy rainfall in uh, Dubai. Blame some other people there. Climate change. Some other people. It is not a cloud seeding. It is a climate change only. If that is happening, then whatever the finance is given by the banks, all are sheer waste. Once the loans are given, lo uh, they turn into bad on account of uh, this uh, heavy rains. It is a loss to the bank. Not only loss to the bank, 
it is a loss to the depositors also. Not to the depositors, it is a loss to the shareholders also. Heavy rains leads to flood in Dubai. Everywhere. We are never expecting 72 or 75 years back only the situation was happened. So that's right. Heavy rains uh, leads to floods in Dubai. It is uh, on account of a climate change only. Climate change only. So electronic city of India, everybody knows about the electronic city of India. Dry days ahead for Bangalore. In the coming days, once upon a time, my childhood, Bangalore is a cool city. People are paradise, that pensions are paradise also, like Pune, pensions are paradise, Bangalore also. Lot of trees are there. Today, on account of real estate growth, the, the cutting of trees are also increasing. Once the trees are cut, then echo da damage will happen to the ecosystem. A dry story of India, Silicon Valley, the water prices in Bangalore. That is a fair 20 days back, everybody knows about the water shortage. Pictures are saying that Bangalore city is the best uh, for uh, work from home. Not in uh, the work from home, it is the best. Why? Because a lot of uh, traffic jumps are there, a lot of uh, pollution is uh, created, uh, and uh, water problems are also there. As the roads are floods in rain, too much rain, or too hot, or no water, and uh, there is uh, no water in summer. This is the situation, not restricted to Bangalore also. Every city is like that. Today, for the last one week, uh, I'm suffering a lot in Hyderabad also. Heat waves are there. Heat waves. It is very difficult to come outside from the house. All houses, the air conditions are on, on. Bangalore water crisis. Today, the Bangalore water crisis is also there. And the employees in Bangalore are skip offices. Why? Because uh, the water is a lifeline of the public. Lifeline. Without the water, survival is a horrible. Not even question mark. It is a horrible. The lifeline system of the particularly water is a lifeline system of the people, public. Without the water, imagine what are the consequences and all these things. And the dry days ahead for Bangalore. In the coming days, Definitely, Bangalore is also not a suitable place because uh, everywhere ecosystem is completely damaged on account of various reasons. Whether it is on account of agriculture activity, even agriculture activity also, the modernizer systems, uh, it creating a lot of pollutions. And the industry sector, uh, particularly pharma, I'm talking about Vishakapatnam. Recently, one uh, other country people, they did some research in Vishakapatnam Pharma City and that uh, lands are not uh, useful uh, next 25 years. Uh, if that land is not used, uh, then only the lands are uh, possible to use, uh, reuse uh, after 20 years. And the lung cancers are increasing uh, and the smoke is increasing uh, and it uh, spreads in the Vishakapatnam local area also. Water is completely, completely polluted, contaminated. If at all that is a drinking, then it is a problem also. Because uh, all the pharma city loans are financed by the banks. And once the banks are financed, uh, and if uh, the government is uh, taking action to shift that particular uh, pharma city to other places, uh, then automatically the bank loans will turn into bank. All these things are uh, on account of a uh, climate change. On Paris Agreement, everybody knows the uh, Paris Climate Agreement. Mr. Kofi Annan, the former Secretary General of the United Nations, expressed during the Paris Climate Agreement that the global community is approaching a critical juncture. Today, today they, this year, uh, Hyderabad is also severe heat. And a critical juncture where the climate change becomes irreversible. Once uh, the climate change has happened, it is very difficult to reverse it also. Potentially depriving current and future generations. Okay. The present generation, they are facing future generation, how they are uh, surviving or living conditions are horrible conditions uh, on account of the climate change. 
healthy and a sustainable planet uh, a scenario where a terrible consequences of uh, for a humanity as a whole it is not one person or two persons humanity as a whole they will uh, suffer a lot these sentiments vibrate uh, strongly today than ever achieving goals limiting global warming around uh, 1.5 degree celsius to 2 degrees uh, above the pre industrial level deemed to be practical unattainable without uh, urgent substantial and uh, widespread of it reductions in uh, green gas emissions the pre industrial uh, level uh, that is 1.5 to 2 degrees if uh, that is a uh, continue pre the industrial then only survival is possible today on account of a development activity the gdp is increasing the industrialization is increasing employment opportunities are also increasing once we are restricted to below 1.5 or 2 degrees celsius then then the growth will not happen once the growth of the country is not there then automatically unemployment all the problems will arise such a scenario could be profound adverse repercussions ecosystem health problems will arise today when the rain will come when the rain will stop when the summer will start when the summer will go when the winter will start when the winter will close all these things it is very difficult to estimate even sometimes in summer also rains are there you know rain is season also summer is there so it is unpredictable on account of uh, ecosystem is uh, going to be damaged shortly the ozone layers also depleting uh, day by day day by day health infrastructure and the economy as a whole will suffer uh, on account of uh, climate change a recent study carbon brief one research organization uh, they the mentioned uh, they, they mentioned about uh, how this uh, climate change temperature rises uh, 1.8 degrees uh, 5, 1.5 degrees to celsius to 2 degrees uh, reduces the global domestic products once they are restricted to 1.5 to 2 degrees then automatically 8 to 13% uh, gdp will reduce by 2100 so once the all uh, governments are uh, taking measures uh, to reduce the particular uh, the, uh, the rise in temperature then automatically it affects on our global uh, the <coughs> gdp ratio so that's why that uh, climate change is uh, very 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 important we have to safeguard our uh, the yet <coughs> text in the Then we have extreme weather, tropical cyclones, tufans, all these things. Even uh, every year, tufan, tufan, cyclone, tufan, cyclone, cyclones. And if you see on account of a tufan or cyclone, complete damage of the properties, whether it is a public property or the private property, all are damaged. Then additional funds are required. Once the additional funds are required, it means uh, other, uh, particularly the International Monetary Fund or World Bank, uh, they save that others. And uh, if at all uh, the restoration is not there, people will suffer a lot. Not only that one, winter storms. Today winter is uh, sometimes too cold. On account of a winter, uh, the snow that is increasing, even a uh, that is covered with the core cells two extreme extremes are there today all are extremes rains are extremes summer is extreme winter is also extreme and extreme floods floods are increasing floods are increasing that dubai is one even other countries also lot of floods are happening then by livelihood is a big problem so that's why we have to arrest we have to safeguard our uh, the particular earth otherwise uh, survival is uh, not only question mark for the present generation but also the future generation extreme weather condition heat waves are going on today if you see in the heart of the city of hyderabad uh, the traffic movement is uh, very very thin between uh, 
12 other la 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock like that nobody is ventured or adventure to go outside from the house or office during that period so if you see the people are also lot of heat waves are going some of the people they want to take some relief particularly from the sea or rivers like that not only drought is also increasing on account of climate change droughts are also increasing if you see the drought there is a on account of drought the land no water once no water means uh, irrigation is a question mark once the irrigation is a problem uh, then food uh, problem will arise so uh, severe drought is also happening not only that one hail storms particularly in the yeah, summer also particularly summer uh, the hail storms are increasing even two days back uh, particularly in uh, telangana state uh, hail storms are there <clears throat> now we are in summer but a hail storms not only that one wild fights are happening on account of a heat the rubbing of that particular trees and thereby the fights are also happen thereby ecosystem is completely damaged even the greenery trees are also on account of that particular fire storm not only this one soil pollution degradation all these things are happening on account of increase in the pollution air pollution every industry is creating lot of pollutions if it only pollutions are not controlled then automatically it gives a lot of health issues to the human beings not only that one now water pollution is also increasing the effluents particularly the industries are uh, releasing the effluents uh, and it is a uh, uh, submerged in uh, sea or rivers thereby the drinking water problems are also arising all these uh, things are on account of a uh, damage of the ecosystem marine pollution is also increasing throw away whatever the unused uh, items are they throw away in the sea and thereby marine pollution environmental accidents are also happening particularly in uh, gulf countries the environmental accidents are also happening uh, and thereby whatever the natural resources are there that is exhausted on account of uh, the environmental accidents not only that one sea level rise is also increasing today the sea level rising is a that is a dangerous sign particularly those who are living in a uh, sea coast area if the cyclone is there then automatically the houses will wash out like anything that's why the chronic sea level rise or sea surges and the water scares today even not only bangalore even in other places even hyderabad also the water scarcity not only in hyderabad and other things i'm giving example across the world the water scarcity is also there that's why this is a deforestation this is on account of deforestation cutting on account of real estate growth deforestation is also happening and desertification this is also once there is no rains or no water or no river water is passing on desertification is also increasing so the public policy changes to be pollution control regulations whatever the pollution control regulations are there people are not adhering industrial store not adhering they are always a commercial nature so once the pollution control regulations what are the measures to be taken by them they are not taking even the pollution control boards are there thereby the it is a very difficult for survive for all these sectors banks are financing whether it is industry or agriculture or what service sector all the financing by the banks that's why the banks are called backbone to the economy now our topic is on responsible finance this is in brief if as a responsible banker i have to do some not only for the development of the society i have to do something for the safeguard the 
ecosystem of the country. The environmental system of the country. So whatever my permissions are, whatever my products are there, whatever my lending uh, systems are there, uh, all are eco-friendly, not uh, eco damage. You should not uh, create any problem. Once all these uh, measures are taken by the whatever, then only we have to finance. That's why in the coming days, uh, I'm uh, presumption or assumption, whatever you called it as a, uh, the Reserve Bank of India also issued the guidelines on uh, environmental friendly products are to be developed uh, and that is to be properly audited by the banks, uh, whether pre-loan or post-loan sanction, uh, these are to be verified uh, and at a regular intervals. That's why like a stock audit or receivables audit or the credit audit uh, in the coming days, uh, the ESG audit. Uh, particularly the pre and the post sanction uh, that is uh, inevitable. Why? Because the banks are in the process of lending. Uh, somebody has to verify, go to the industry, whether they are fulfilling all the conditions uh, as stipulated by the bank, uh, then uh, the bank will take their services. For that, the CMS are very much used. Now coming to responsible financing. Our topic is on responsible finance. Well, green loans can be ESG linked. Today, green deposits are also mobilizing by the banks. What is a green deposits? When the deposits are mobilized, that is used for loans that are to be sanctioned for maintaining the greenery of the country, not the pollution. So the greenery loans, a ESG link uh, are issued slowly for finance environmentally sustainable projects, not a thermal project. We are going to finance only the solar projects. We are going to finance only the hydel project, environmental friendly, not the thermal. Thermal is a lot of uh, air pollution, water pollution, all these things are there. So the guidelines of RBA first step in implementing uh, ESG norms. The first step uh, maintain the target of reducing the carbon emissions. The main ultimate is uh, the carbon emissions uh, and net zero emissions by 2007. By 2070, the net zero emissions are to be maintained. So whatever the additional emissions are created, the industry has to compensate that one. Suppose I take for example, certain percentage of emission is increased in that particular industry. At the same time, they have to develop the greenery to compensate the additional emissions. That's why it is called net zero emissions by 2007. So it is the our in the country also given assurance to the Paris Agreement. Not only this one, banks are supporting three important sectors. In any country, particularly three important sectors are there. Hence, the banks are called backbone to the economy. What are the three sectors? Particularly, agricultural sector, that is called primary sector. Banks are giving loan. Banks are giving total loan, total loans. In the, in the future, the banks are not giving any loans for tractor, diesel or petrol only electric driven tractors or uh, harvesters electric driven only so uh, most of the banks uh, they have started already started uh, and the industrial sector whenever we are going to give the loan what are the existing emissions it is created what is the water pollution or air pollution how much damage to the society that is uh, verified by the competent uh, professionals then based on that report uh, then uh, we will verify the financials uh, or credit worthiness uh, or uh, the civil rating or uh, the commercial civil rating, whatever the projections are there. All these uh, things we will verify later on. If at all uh, it is creating pollution, we don't want to finance. And service sector, tertiary sector, like hospitals, education centers, uh, so many service sectors are there. Whenever the banks are giving loans, we will verify the, whether it is environmental friendly or not. 
green loans, the ESG linked loans. Bank is in need of our under responsible lending. This is a need of our. For that, uh, the uh, Reserve Bank of India also defined uh, the uh, guidelines uh, and uh, the principles also defined uh, by various almost all banks in the world also. Some of the banks, the uh, top banks are there. Uh, the responsible finance. That also I will discuss in due course. Sustainable development is the forefront of the national agenda. Because if our country, our country also, the national agenda is a sustainable. So today, why the people are not, not today, particularly today only, people are not interested to go out. Particularly between 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. Heat waves are going on. And uh, if it all uh, that is uh, it is not a sustainable uh, place to live. And influencing banks and NBFC to raise uh, ESG based uh, responsibility. The Reserve Bank of India clearly and categorically told no, 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 we don't accept. Uh, you are a commercial bank, your motive is a profit. That is the bottom line. But bottom line is not only not only important, uh, but uh, the environment is to be protected by the banks because you are the lenders you are giving the most of the sources of finance to the various business units the banks are non-banking financial companies they are financing that's why you have to feel the responsibility financing means environmental friendly loans you have to give now the direct banks are towards of funding sustainable projects based on environmental, social and uh, governance aspects and also invites a change in the ecosystem to benefit the following, uh, uh, those who are following uh, ESG practices. Whatever the ESG practices are, best uh, worldwide practices are there, that is to be followed by the all sectors in the economy. It is not only restricted to industrial sector, it is not only restricted to the agriculture sector, it is not only restricted to the service sector. All sectors uh, should follow the ecosystem, in my change in the ecosystem, not damage the eco-friendly. Banks India are now turning to focus towards the environmental social governance based lending while lending or investing. Banks are doing two types of business. One is lending activity, second one is investment activity. The Treasury Department of the banks, uh, they are investing. Because a bank for total funds, 100% uh, total funds, they are not uh, giving lending. Some of the portion they are giving, uh, they are investing, particularly the green industries, the eco-friendly industries, not uh, damaged industries. So the investment also restrictions are there. That is the guidelines of the regulator. That is the guidelines of the government of India. Get the guidelines of the shareholders also. So wind energy prefer, hydropower prefer, solar energy prefer, and contributing towards the social development projects. Whatever the social development projects are there, once the promoters approach the bank, we will offer the concessional rate of interest. Collaterals also we will reduce once it is a social development projects. That is a banks should feel the responsibility. Not left and right, left and right based on commercial nature. Commercial nature is now the secondary important. The first important is the environmental protection. The banks should feel the responsibility of the protect the environment, not the say, first area. The commercial nature is there. The commercial nature is stage two, not stage one. Responsible lending concept is a new origin to the banks, MBFC's financial issue, and make them more interest in funding working towards the green projects. Today, every balance sheet, annual reports, they have to cover as per the CB guidelines. How many green loans, particularly the green projects of finance, out of the total advances, uh, what is a portion of uh, green projects that a percentage to be increased on a year on a year basis? Not a decrease, not a decrease. Not only that one, this enables the banks to NBFCs uh, 
to not only the invest in esg based lending but also offer loans to the organization esg matrix today in the coming days if at all uh, you are getting that esg audit pre sanction or post sanction uh, the reserve bank of india or international benchmarks uh, esg matrix for them so whether the industry is uh, creating any pollution at what level above the level or below the level whether all these things of water pollution or air pollution or contamination what out all the environmental pressure how the industry is going to damage to the society or if the industry is below the benchmarks then automatically it is a eco friendly project and the sustainable development projects bank will encourage and bank will also give the rate of interest with a lower rate of interest understanding of the esg linked loans what is the esg linked loans in the coming days credit appraisal means projections credit worthiness of the borrower profits no the first and primary important is the esg linked loans whether it is a real estate builder or not suppose a real estate is developing the real estate once in that particular vicinity how many the trees is going to that's why earlier i have read one book one publisher the publisher one book if you purchase one book you plant one tree then only the ecosystem will not damage once you purchase it one book one book means you have to plant one tree then only the ecosystem will not damage otherwise in the coming days the future generation the surviving and the life style is always miserable and question marks also eg loans links focus on environment social and the governance aspect are performance of the borrower the borrower not simply managing the show the borrower simply not manufacturing the products no i don't require the processing of your products and other things on account of the processing how much carbon emissions are released by you how the damage to the society that the, they are verifying later on they will verify the credit worthiness the projections the feasibility study so in the coming days in the project reports also the assg the feasibility study is also to be one chapter to be included in the project finance of the banks also that's why in the coming days particularly cms once the our committee has taken up the matter with the reserve bank of india or indian banks association definitely in the coming days one more opportunity will arise like stock and receivable audit but when come back to stock and receivable audit this is the volume of transactions are more definitely everybody will get some opportunity in this process esg pre loan verification post loans i told uh, i will discuss about all these things uh, at the end also this becomes a new norm in the banking industry as it is not only banks of the organization to be responsible towards environmental social and uh, government related efforts but also avail the greater benefits like a uh, lower rate of interest on various types of it. once is a protected environment once is not releasing the fl the carbon emissions uh, definitely the rate of interest concession will be there and because of why because uh, tomorrow the take for example i told about visak visakapatnam the pharma city and if a government has uh, taken a decision to shift all the industries to elsewhere means uh, the loans given by the bank will turn into non performing all loans will turn into non performing so the gdp growth will decrease that lands are not useful that water is contaminated and the people are living surrounding areas and lung cancers are also they are facing definitely in the coming days the government will uh, give instructions once uh, all loans are provided by the banks only 
all pharma city working capital or term loan or bills discounting or letter of credit whatever the various types of loans are there that is funded to the pharma city once the pharma city is closed the banks will also incur huge amount of loss on the other hand overall promotes the sustainability development the people are should be happy they are, they should not they should not feel that they are living on sun they should feel that they are living on moon today land is also like a sun particularly in the summer and the social responsibility of bank in the long run and the yes we link loans the financial terms are loans are linked to esg performance what is the esg performance of the industry what is the esg performance of the real estate sector what is the esg performance of the chemical industry what is the esg performance of the textile industry what is the esg performance of the sugar industry whatever the various industries are there all industries the esg matrix are going to be developed shortly and the matrix is to be followed by the industries workplace diversity and the score and contribution of green energy projects and social initiatives social initiatives that is the need of our otherwise today very difficult even today i have seen in the <coughs> ahmedabad the police they are putting the ac ac hats ac hats because they they have to control the traffic particularly in the mid of the, the 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock heat waves that's why they have supplied with ac hats so they will put the hat and ac blowers are happening then his the head will be cold otherwise what is the side effects and the rest of the body is the heat only the head is cool that is happening the environment is completely damaged completely damaged everybody is a commercial commercial nature and they are neglecting the environmental protection and the social initiatives these can be tracked by the diverse matrix like sustainable performance targets industry wise the need of our for the initiative also to develop the industry wise the matrix particularly the esg matrix the plant how much it is creating or processing unit how much the electricity how much it is creating and the packing material so many the sub processes all these things they have device the matrix esg matrix key performance indicators are laid down by the banks that will be followed by the banks while giving the loan that too, that is to be verified by the external people because the banks are not, all loans it is very difficult for them to verify each and every industry while giving the loan whether they are following the esg matrix or not that is to be that is to be verified by the professionals like cms or other professionals the role of banks and financial institutions promote sustainable almost all state bank of india already started and the number of our banks in their annual report they mentioned how much greenery finance green deposits and what type of loans they are giving what is the percentage of esg loans in the total loans and all these things even in the banks also even in the banks also the, the guidelines are there even bank regional offices the sensors they should not use more electricity and whatever the solar panels are there the solar panels are to be erected on the roofs of the journal offices thereby they need not depend on hydro or the thermal energy so even the internal as well as by lending the particular loans they should follow the esg matrix as per the reserve bank of india it is important to link the development with the financial system largely supporting sun okay you are every year the banks are giving loans 
year by year the loans growth is improving that growth is not uh, the, now they are not thinking about that growth uh, how much uh, sustainable uh, finance you are giving what type of uh, loans uh, whether you are following the responsible financing or not in the in the country not only the makes uh, financial institution more responsible for society centric but also enable the organization seeking the funds uh, in the work area sales i told whenever you are telling to the others also first you have to practice how much emissions uh, carbon emissions uh, are releasing by your zonal offices by your branches are you adopting the solar panels on the roofs uh, at the branches or atms today one good thing is state bank of india all uh, they not only state bank of india all banks uh, they move to cloud they move to cloud once the cloud is there cloud is on behalf of all banks and uh, the individual servers are not there in the branches banks and uh, the uh, even branches also individual servers are not there counter uh, the uh, computer room is also not uh, there all are moved to the cloud only by acs the air condition and the electricity bill is substantially reduced on account of initiation of the cloud computing and the concentric all the enables of the organization seeking the funds in the work areas related to esg might have lucrative benefits with the availing loans whenever the loans are given by the banks once they are esg mandate they followed definitely the loans are cheaper when compared to the others both ways concept enables a sustainable development the main object is a sustainable development is there by 2070 the pre industrial the whatever the targets are there that is to be achieved that the india is also given promise to the paris the agreement so that's why we have to stick on that one uh, that uh, particular uh, targets esg strategies linked to higher rate of uh, return on investment even uh, trading also particularly in the trading some of the banks uh, the esg loans are increasing uh, then the market value of the shares are also increased and uh, higher uh, return on investment also that is possible they yeah, they because uh, here once the government has uh, taken a decision uh, the, uh, beyond this parameters of the industry sector to be closed means uh, the ultimate uh, sufferers are the lenders the shareholders the employees uh, society as a whole the companies are following esg practices or seem to be more uh, return oriented thus offering better returns to the investors or lenders the responsibility not only by lending the banks are to be seen at the same time the responsibility is also there from the company side also manufacturing sectors or service sectors etc etc since esg accesses the business processes in terms of dealing with the stakeholders these companies are giving a better equity returns in different aspects when compared to non esg compliant the esg compliant industries better returns better dividends better rate of return on investment and the recognition the image of the organization will also increase substantially reasons why esg based responsible lending is a positive aspect to banks as well as nbfcs today their credit policies are completely revamped revamped of the completely the credit policy guidelines of the banks also completely revamped and they have given topmost important for the responsible financing particularly the esg compliance if i see the credit policy that is a first april onwards 2024 onwards all banks are declared their credit policy you see the credit policies the top most important given in the credit policy guidelines of the banks are esg based responsible lending that's why this is a burning topic and innovative topic and in the coming days also 
avenues are uh, definitely it will happen uh, subject to efforts uh, made by the initiative with appropriate authorities also. ESG linked investments for NBFCs or banks to improve their reputation. If you see the top 10 in the world, they are reputed banks. They are always funding to the ESG they comply and the loans. They are not given, they are not contributing any emissions by lending. And they will look into that uh, before lending also. They will look into the parameters uh, as defined by the International Monetary Fund, IMF, a wing of the World Bank, a wing of the World Bank. They have defined. Now, this is a term improve the funding ecosystem. Once the bank images increase, once the banks are going for public issue, once the banks are mobilizing deposits, uh, definitely people will move from uh, other banks to this bank because uh, these people are lend responsible lending. They are the responsible lenders. They are not damaging to the economy, they, particularly the environmental problems they will not create. They are uh, environmental friendly loans they are giving. It opens opportunities to diversify the investments in new market linked to the sustainable development and social projects. Lot of demand is there in the EHG, particularly in the market. New, the new companies are evolving and a lot of demand is also there. And the increase in the demand for lending social enterprises. Principles, responsibility. Whenever I am giving loans, some principles I have to follow. If at all I am not following the principles, then automatically it is a sheer waste. The basic principles of less responsible lending that is uh, very much required. So that's why the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund also, they defined all the regulators across the world. Uh, these are the principles you have to follow. Once you are feeling that you are a responsible lender, you have to follow these principles. What are those principles? Principle one, ethical code of conduct and ESG governance. Ethical conduct, the banks should follow the ethical conduct and ESG and SG governance. Financial issues should develop a sound governance systems. To oversee the environmental and the social performance of their business activity and disclose according. Whatever the best practices, whatever the code of conduct uh, the banks are giving, uh, they're following uh, while giving lending, uh, that should be transparent and that should be disclosed to the public, uh, to all the stakeholders through their annual reports. So, first and foremost principle. The final responsible lending is uh, ethical conduct and uh, EST. They have to develop. Today, that much expertise is not there in the country. The credit policy is completely revamped. The existing credit policy will be revamped substantially. Thus, principle two integration of ESG risk management in business activities. Your business activity, you shift to cloud, thereby the electricity bill will reduce. Instead of uh, the, uh, the people uh, traveling uh, in particularly, the tra they traveling uh, to different uh, places uh, for training, conduct online training. Once online training is there, uh, people will not use the public transport. Once they use the public transport, uh, definitely carbon emissions will release. So today, the video conferences are increasing. And uh, they are not conducting uh, different parts. Uh, through the branch manager, they will sit in the branch uh, and the conference will, uh, three to four means uh, three to four, they will conduct the conference. Uh, from their uh, particular system, they can view. They need not to go one day before, uh, stay in the hotel, uh, travel, uh, electric, uh, particularly the buses uh, or the cars uh, or the flight uh, and uh, all these things. Uh, no. First of all, integration, the ESG in the business activity. First, you should be a model one. 
you should be a role model one then you can uh, extend that role model uh, to your borrower subs so that's why cloud computing is one area and uh, all branches solar panels all atms solar panel they should not depend on the direct current particularly the state electricity boards they are providing the current don't use that current develop the eco friendly energy that's the state bank of india also they have started some wind energy so particularly in coimbatore that covers a number of that electricity is covers a number of branches of the state bank of india we are manufacturing our power that is a slogan we are not depending on hydel power we are not depending on thermal power we are developing the eco friendly power that power we are using whatever the surplus is there that we are selling to the others that is the new version so the integration of esg in business activities financial nation should integrate the analysis of esg factors in their investment lending and risk management process across the business lines minimize the adverse impact on their own operations on society while you giving the loans uh, you are looking about the esg matrix uh, parameters uh, why can't for you first you practice it then roll out it to others and once you are practicing it uh, then it is very easy for you to verify in the industry search so the cloud computing is one one second one is all branches are uh, roofs are covered with uh, solar panels and uh, generate the electricity and uh, the wind energy also they are manufacturing some of the initiatives of uh, some banks minimizing environmental footprint in uh, internal operations paper not to be used no withdrawal no check facility once uh, the withdrawal papers are there cutting the trees so that's why the state bank of india developed one app that is called you know you only need one you only need one why you and why you know that is on account of you know the paper consumption is reduced drastically even pre approved loans for personal loans we are not taking any documentation no paper nothing no paper nothing only based on the the erp program and we will analyze the civil report we will analyze the deposits we will analyze the previous loans history repayment and accordingly matrix is developed by the software and the software runs the data and captures the data and it gives some weightage and finally this borrower is eligible for this much the pre approved personal loan are that no dp note no application no photograph no visit to the branch once you are going to visit two or three times then automatically you are going to reduce the carbon emissions that's why the pre approved loan that is a responsibility the bank india's largest bank they felt the responsibility not to give any inconvenience to the society that's why the you know you only need one one even gold loans you know kisan credit card you know no paper work even on trial basis particularly even concurrent audit in the coming days from your office only from your office only you need not to come to the bank and verify and give the report all these kachana kachana is stop so all images are readily available if at all you want to verify go to the click the agreement agreement scanned copy is available application scanned copy is available all are available at your office only you need not visit once you are visited you are consuming the carbon emissions concurrent audit so the financial institution should minimize the negative impacts on their business operation on the environment in which the operate and possible and promote possible impacts 
once i am the role model once i am doing that particular uh, the the <clears throat> whatever uh, the best uh, international practices are there then i am uh, eligible to tell to others if at all i am not doing uh, i am not eligible to disseminate that information to the others environmentally friendly products services and investment we are increasing even today the central bank digital currency the printing of the the currency the life of the currency is only one year reserve bank of india they are going to stop the printing of the currency that is from the mysore printing process uh, printing uh, press salbone near kolkata devas madhya pradesh and the nasik in maharashtra they are in a phased manner they are going to stop the printing of the currency they are uh, already introduced uh, the 1st november 2022 the wholesale cbdc and the 1st december uh, 2022 the retail cbdc now the bank salaries bank staff salaries uh, that is to be credited to cbdc account uh, not the savings bank account further also upi is also developed uh, upi 1 2 3 without connectivity also the funds can be transferred that is called upi 1 2 3 once that the, the digital currency is there cutting of the trees and not only cutting huge amount of uh, the expenditure is incurred in transportation once the notes are printed uh, it carries number of uh, vehicles uh, security staff uh, pollution carbon emissions uh, and they reach to the branch and they will put it to the currency chest once the digital currency is there no question no question of a uh, increasing the carbon emissions so the environmental friendly products and services and investments financial nations should invest in environmentally friendly products that's a pre approved products in the pre approved product the customer don't visit boss you we will sanction your loan through your you don't know app and whatever the eligibility is there if you uh, require yes then automatically loan will be created automatically the amount will be created to the borrower account so that type of friendly products uh, and business enhances the positive environmental impact wherever possible whatever my operations are there whatever my processes are there all are to be streamlined based on econo environmental friendly production the site is called sustainable finance or responsible finance enable inclusion of human and social development financial should support the inclusion and equitable the equitable human and social development. being a so being a organization in the society how to protect the society i'm getting a benefit from the society that's why i should not a damage it to the society all banks they are in the society they are getting benefits from the society they should not harm to the society stakeholders engagement financial research to develop understanding of the stakeholders needs interest expectations in from the guide their strategy and decision making what about the stakeholders out there whether it's a shareholder or the employees or the government uh, we have to engage we have to honor if at all i am uh, giving the loans uh, that uh, econo- the environmental damage loans uh, then uh, later on suddenly the loans will turn into non performing then all stakeholders will face the problem i should not give a scope for them so the financial institution should develop an understanding of their stakeholders needs interest and expectations to inform and guide the strategies of the decision making in each and every decision making even board also whenever the committee is there for sanctioning of loans the committee will also look into these aspects the esg matrix are followed or not that to the external people has to give that certainty that's why in the coming days in the coming days definitely the chance will come 
particularly ESG related lending process, you will get a chance. And whenever the bank is going to give the loan, that is a pre audit, pre audit to be verified by the competent person as a professional. And once the loan is given every year, that is whether he is maintaining the same standards or deteriorated or increased. That is to be verified by the earlier the competent professionals only. Commitment to human rights. You have committed to human rights. In the society, up to six o'clock, if at all I am unable to go out on account of uh, the hot, uh, the heat waves, uh, yeah, they, uh, this is on account of uh, the various lending initiations. Particularly industrial zones, they are giving loans. The industrial expansion, they are not following, they are not adhering the pollution standards. Even the state pollution control board is there. Central control pollution agencies are there. Still, commercial, 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 profit, profit, top line and bottom line. Top line sales and bottom line profit. The commercial object, commercial organization, their objectives are this one. So once the starting point for the commercial organizations, the lenders, once the lending is happening, then only the commercial activity will start. Once the lending uh, scrutinized uh, the ESD governance, then automatically the promoters uh, will start uh, to implement. Uh, that's why uh, the banking finance uh, today, the banking finance is going to be a responsible finance. Responsible finance. Distribution. Whatever my efforts are there during that particular financial year, 1st April to 31st March, I have to disclose in the balance sheet. I have to disclose. Once I disclose in the balance sheet, uh, then only the public aware my image will increase. If at all I am doing wrong things, uh, my image will deteriorate. Once the disclosure is also required for that, the company secretaries of India. They have already started the ESG audit, particularly in the financial statements. You are at the production level. They are at the reporting level. So the company secretaries of India already started ESG audit. What are the CB guidelines? What are the RBA guidelines? In annual reports, what are the annual reports? Whether they are mentioning all these parameters or not, they will verify. But uh, you, your role is you. You are going to because uh, as of date, it is not there. Subjected to get the approval from the appropriate authority by the PFSA board, uh, then it is a good opportunity. The financial issue should regularly review the report on their progress in meeting the principles contained in these guidelines. Definitely, they have to, they have to uh, they mention then only the market value of the share, the stakeholders will be happy while reading that one. Okay, in my bank, uh, particularly uh, out of the total advances, uh, the 60% are uh, ESG based loans only. That is a great. My investment is strong. Always today, investment don't aspire for the return on investment. Suddenly, the return on investment is stopped. Once the industry is creating a lot of nonsense to the environment, suddenly they will stop. They don't understand, they will stop. Once stopped, even principal is also going to be wasted. Our share capital will be wasted. So as a stakeholders, we have to see whether a green lending is happening in my bank or not. Public policy change. Resources conservation declarations. Policy to bounce to be changed. Take for example, granary. 
particularly the wind energy, the solar energy. I have to give the law. I have to give the constitutional rate of interest. I have to give the margins also low. Whenever the solar energy or wind energy projects are there, the lower rate of interest, the margins are low, the pollinator security are also not uh, when compared to others. Because I have to encourage them in the coming days. If all these initiatives are there, uh, then only the economy will survive. Otherwise, the uh, economy will face the problems. And uh, the technology changes, clean energy technologies. So, elevator ideas, particularly in sea zones, if a uh, wind, uh, there is a possibility. Possibility is there. Risk is there. Possibility is also there. But uh, here, in the sea coast or a river bed area, the wind energy, lot of scope is there. Then the banks, if they are financing those areas, definitely they are also encouraging the environmental friendly projects. That is my responsibility finance. And energy saving technologies, whatever the energy saving technologies are there, that I have to encourage. That I have to encourage. Clean transportation. So industries, if at all, all the employees they are using their bikes instead of motor bikes or cars, then in some countries the bikes are common. They are not using cars to go to office. So here, from the public also, but the company has to take a call. And they have to issue the instructions to the staff members. Okay, we want to maintain this uh, eco friendly organization. And uh, everybody should come by bikes. Encourage. If at all they are coming by motorbikes or cars or this one, uh, then uh, they are uh, increasing the carbon emissions. And uh, buses, particularly the buses. If the company is uh, using the electrical buses and the carbon emissions are reduced, then uh, whenever my loans are given, uh, I will prefer this type of industries. Because uh, now, the, the um, industrial forestry is there. Earlier, social forestry is there. Industrial forestry. Industrial forestry means uh, that plants are to be so the, uh, the plants are to be grown in the industry zone, cement industry, steel industry, lot of uh, emissions are created. So in those industries, uh, if uh, plants are growing, then automatically the emissions will absorb. So emissions are created and uh, uh, the, due, due to this uh, greenery and uh, to some extent uh, it will reduce uh, the emission source. So, healthy. All these things are uh, the part of uh, my financing strategies. My financing strategies. Whenever I am giving a loan to the cement industry, if at all they are developing uh, the particularly so, uh, the industrial forestry, then I will take into consideration and the balanced approach is also there. Uh, Whenever I am giving a loan, whether all the buses are uh, electric driven uh, instead of a uh, petrol or diesel, uh, definitely I will prefer, I will give the marks. That's why this is called uh, ESG matrix. ESG matrix. And if the industry is uh, using uh, their own energy through solar panels, uh, I will give more marks to that particular industry. All these uh, things are the part of a uh, responsible finance. Part of uh, the responsible finance. And uh, green technologies. I have to develop the green technologies. Particularly in the particularly in the near uh, the hills, the sloping is there. If the crops are growing sloping, definitely it is an advantage. If at all plain lands are there and the water is uh, lifted, water is there, again I am consuming the electricity. Here, 
the sloping of water during the rainy season uh, if it only the blocks are there they will preserve the water uh, then automatically here the electricity problem will not arise the electricity consumption will reduce drastically and in these areas uh, the self generation of the power particularly solar is also possible solar is also possible so instead of a plain lands uh, the sloping of the <laughs> near the hill areas uh, i will prefer because uh, at the time of rainy season uh, they will catch uh, they, uh, they catch that particular water uh, and they will use that water for uh, irrigation purposes instead of using the motors instead of uh, lifting the water with the help of uh, the electricity where carbon emissions are increased and uh, i will prefer this one in agriculture lending shifting sentiment brown industries to the green companies brown industries to green companies so the green uh, particularly the industries uh, should not uh, create problems here. whatever the automation is required the automation banks will give finance and instead of using the old machinery and create a lot of uh, pollutions uh, and damage to the ecosystem they will not get any funding from the bank so the brown to green and whenever i am uh, giving a loan and i will verify how much the pollution is created what is the manufacturer's specification and uh, what type of uh, energy they are using all these things i will look into then only i will prefer this type of industries uh, not the brown industries uh, where it is uh, creating a lot of emissions disruptive business models are also there whenever i am giving loans i will prefer uh, only whether it is a uh, uber or ola or uh, amazon or uh, netflix suppose i take for example netflix everybody knows about the netflix if at all the uh, the movies are released in netflix they need not to go to the malls to see the picture there by if at all 100 people are moving uh, 100 cars are running on the road uh, and then automatically lot of carbon emissions and uh, netflix is uh, they are uh, environmental friendly you can see the movie in your own house with the pleasant and uh, whatever comforts you require is of uh, taking the vehicle go to the mall and coming back and a traffic jam and in the traffic jam the pollution will be aggravated you for that type of uh, innovating to or disruptive business models are there the banks will encourage take for example every uba sharing of uba sharing system is there on account of pandemic it was uh, stop three people three people for uh, the three and uh, the three or four people four people traveling on one car instead of four cars thereby carbon emissions are gradually reduced on account of you marketing particularly amazon the carbon emissions are reduced drastically earlier people used to use their motorcycles or bikes or scooters or cars to go to the market and pick up the vegetables and provisions today that is not there Uh, amazon or big basket uh, they are carrying that a uh, particular uh, 10 to 20 people uh, in one go with uh, or there is scooter or motorcycle or lisius or fresh to home all the because uh, now on account of that type of a model i will prefer why because uh, it reduces the carbon emission drastically for that i will give the interest rate low for that i will uh, offer uh, the lower co- uh, collateral security for the loan i will offer uh, less margins uh, for that type of uh, models disruptive business uh, models uh, the banks are going to encourage in the future not uh, environmental pollution created industries models are not 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 the need of our i have to safeguard the plan planet 
and uh, I should not uh, give any problem to the human parts. Way forward the easiest business lending in India. What is the way forward uh, for a ESG based lending? The Reserve Bank of India has already initiated, intimated by interest in laying down the rules and regulations governing ESG based lending, which will give a roadmap for directions to the bank and NBFCs. Banks are giving loan, non banking financial lending. And today, even uh, all banks, uh, they are giving uh, electric cars. Some of the banks' uh, credit policies are out of the total cars. If at all they are financing uh, 10,000 vehicles in a year, out of that 50% uh, should be an electrical vehicle. Otherwise, uh, we should not accept. The trade policy also revamped, redesigned, rules regulations and the governing ESG based lending, which will give roadmap direction to the banks, NBFCs to follow norms, offer benefits while funding a sustainable project linked with the ESG matrix. In the coming days, ESG matrix will come for each and every industry. This is the matrix. This is the standard. Beyond the standard, don't finance. Below the standards, finance. It will not create any problem to the ecosystem. Beyond the standards, it creates the problem. The top three banks in the world responsible lending or responsible financing or lending. One and the same. Top three banks. The first bank is a responsible banker pertaining to financial institution that prioritize ESG factors in their operations and investments. Whenever they are going to give the loan or whenever they are functioning their business organization or whenever they are in getting, they investing their funds, they will follow the ESG factors. First one is KFW. Development Bank number one in the world. Responsible funding or lending or financing. KFW is uh, number one in the world. What they have done? KFW is a German development bank recognized for the emphasis on sustainable finance. The initiation extends financial backing assistance to Diverse area of initiatives for the sustainable development with Germany and the global. Whenever they are giving in Germany or in the globally, they will follow the sustainable finance only. They don't deviate it. They don't deviate the matrix. ESG matrix. Concerning the short uh, sustainable finance, KFW particularly presents uh, Variety of products, they developed a variety of products based on the ESG matrix and the services tied to blossom environmental and the social responsibility. That's why the KW is the number one bank in the world. This encompasses funding of a renewable energy projects, energy efficient measures and sustainable transport alongside initiatives of supporting uh, urban growth, biodiversity, preservation, climate. So in their credit policy, they mentioned like that. They trained the people like that. Their staff members, the credit department also. KFW also upholds the dedication, transparency and responsibility. And every year, their balance sheets also disclose it to the public. This is my lending. You verify whether it is a creating a pollution to the economy or not, or world. The bank periodically issues sustainability reports. Q1 or Q2 or Q3 or Q4, quarterly once they will remain. And the comprehensive insights of the performance across the dimensions of the carbon emissions, resources utilization, and engagement with the stakeholders. It is possible 
it is not impossible it is possible we have to educate the industrialist we have to educate the promoters of the business units uh, maintain the esc matrix second the ing netherlands number 2 in the world responsible finance so it is a not impossible thing even india even the emerging country like india it is not an impossible thing it is possible ing prominent financial institution that practices sustainability in its core strategy framework their core values no we should not finance to any environmental damage industries or business organizations or service organizations the initiation responsible banking approach revolves around the fundamental principles what are the fundamental principles dimension its own environmental impact funding sustainable economic indicators and cultivating sustainability and oriented ethos and in the realm of a listening it's a environmental footprint ing bank established a ambitious objectives to decrease the carbon emissions that is required that is required they are contributing a lot because that's why at the time of starting this class i told bankers are backbone to the economy once the banks are controlled the emission they while giving the loans they will follow the esg matrix definitely the promoters or industries or service unit they will adhere otherwise they don't get the funding educate of energy efficiency and the transition more sustainable working era so once the banks are giving less interest then automatically they will get more profit outs to sponsor sustainability economic ventures ing bank provides a array of sustainable financial solutions encompassing green bonds and loans alongside the guidance they are giving guidance to the borrowers of how to maintain the ecosystem how to not to create the pollutions all these things simultaneously being a banker they are the advisors to the company sums client seeming to shift towards a low carbon economy it is not only within their country across the globe beyond this tangible initiatives ing bank also fosters a sustainability focused culture by involving employees they are also properly trained they are top to bottom and the stakeholders and what they are doing that is also disseminated to the shareholders and sustainability matters stimulating innovation with the sustainability focus moreover the bank routinely releases the sustainability reports to ensure the transparency regarding the performance and sustain definitely the promoters of our industries definitely they will listen otherwise they don't get the finance they don't get the sources of funds the banks are called backbone to that their share capital is a meager one if you see the every balance sheet of any business organization the share capital out of the total liabilities normally 10 to 15% remaining 80% are funded either by the creditors or the bank financiers definitely they will listen otherwise they will, it is very difficult for them to start a business organizations the third rank stand charge ing netherlands number 3 not to number 3 stand charge is number 3 stand charge is uk upholds the step factor uh, dedication responsible bank practices aimed at harmonizing the financial performance of positive social and environmental outcomes the bank has uh, outlined sustainability objectives such as uh, curbing carbon emissions funding renewable energy ventures only no question of uh, the particular thermal projects are champion in diversity and uh, inclusivity 
Moreover, Standard Chartered is a sustainable financial instrument like green bonds and impact on the investment products and facilitating transaction towards the low carbon amount. Whenever they are mobilizing green bonds, that the funds are to be given to the low carbon emission industries. If at all they borrowed 10,000 crores, the 10 crores, 10,000 crores they have to give. The trustees will also verify that particular thing. Furthermore, the banks conduct a sustainability risk evaluations for its lending operations and uh, collaborates the clients embedded with the sustainability considered in their business frameworks. So if you see the top 10 banks in the world, every bank unique features of their sustainability financing, responsible financing, eco-friendly financing. They don't have uh, the green energy only. They don't encourage the high carbon emissions industries. Uh, they are giving a training to the staff member. They are uh, uh, they they are disseminating the information to the public also. Their images are also increased substantially. Their market share is also increased. And those who are lending that particular companies also, they are also happy because they are getting a lower rate of interest and they are getting a return on investment is also high. The responsible financing. State Bank of India, my bank. Nearly 22,963 physical data servers migrated to cloud computing. Earlier in the bank, 22,963 servers are there. Different parts of the country, all are now in one server. So, 23,963 air conditioned rooms are scrapped. That much emissions are not released. We are also answerable to the society. We are also a responsible bankers. Sustainability, particularly the <clears throat> sanction under World Bank line of credit, 241 solar projects are sanctioned by the bank. And once uh, these are all our sustainability highlights of the state bank of failure. And we have mobilized 800 million green bonds. And that funds are we are giving to green projects, not the high carbon emissions projects. So here, whatever the customers, the footprints of the customers are also reduced on account of various. So 14.31 crore loan provided to finance e-vehicles. So today, the banks are giving loans only e-vehicles, not diesel or petrol or gas. E-vehicles, electric vehicles. Thereby, the carbon emissions are reduced drastically. Next, 56.23 hours, particularly average training hours of the employees reduced. Today, online training. Online training means uh, that uh, persons uh, need not uh, purchase the railway ticket or the car or the air ticket uh, and they will visit. No, in your cabin only, you sit and uh, 3 o'clock uh, uh, on that one, training will be completed by one hour and later on the banking job. Thereby, the footprints, carbon footprints are reduced drastically on account of a sustainability conclusion. Being a custodian of public wealth, people's wealth, banks are called a custodian of people's wealth. Their deposits only, we are giving loans, not by own funds, by share capital is nominal. And I am the custodian of a People's wealth, that is the deposits. Banks have profound responsibility to create long term. And if at all I am taking the deposits and giving loans for carbon emission companies, if later on it creates a problem and the government is issued one GO 
to scrap all these uh, companies which are creating high carbon emissions then all terms uh, all loans will turn into non performing thereby the banks profit will decrease and the sufferers are the depositors for all its stakeholders by incorporating sustainable and responsible business practices and operations today the banks are following this practices in the coming days definitely the degree of the implementation will increase substantially this year also the credit policies of all banks are revamped redesigned by inclusion of the esg loan sondi by taking into account of the responsible financing environmental risk evaluation and environmental audit of credit proposals in the coming days these are the two areas one is uh, how much environmental risk evaluation of the particular project somebody has to verify and uh, audit once i have given loan uh, how much uh, environmental uh, problems it is created whether it is within the norms or above the norms somebody has to verify so the like stock book debt audit as on data stock and book debt audit is there some banks in the world uh, world uh, taking the services of the profession i am not talking about uh, india even in other countries also they are taking the professionals uh, particularly to evaluate the environmental risk of the various uh, projects uh, that are funded by the banks uh, and the environmental audit also by the external people of, of a credit proposals above the certain threshold even in india also 3 crores and uh, above loans uh, the compulsory this type of audit is very much required before giving the loan after giving the loan that is uh, both are required before giving uh, environmental risk evaluation is required after giving the loan uh, environmental audit is also required so pre that is called uh, pre and uh, post sanction of the loan for that i am giving one suggestion if a bsf had to take up the matter with the reserve bank of india or the indian banks association they may add one more opportunity to the cms in this sector this is my perception thinking this is my perception thinking definitely somebody has to verify bankers they are busy with the processing of the loans evaluation of the loans but the technical evaluation report or a credit audit or the stock and book debt audit all are given by the external people only so in the coming days lot of importance is given for the esg matrix uh, while processing the loan uh, somebody has to give this is a good opportunity we should be in the front uh, then we have to okay dialogue with the rpa or uh, the iba in this regard uh, and uh, get the permission uh, and uh, circulate to the banks uh, definitely in the coming days uh, and this is a one opportunity that is available instantly this is not a too far away too long immediately during this financial year anyhow all the banks they are revamping their credit policies and in the reserve bank of india also they have created the esg department then if we interact with them definitely some good things may happen this is in brief about whatever i wish to Talk particularly on the responsible financing. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to discuss about the particular uh, responsibility financing. Uh, and uh, thank you very much uh, for the chairman of the BFSA board. And uh, thank you very much uh, for the officials of uh, the BFSA board uh, for giving me an opportunity. And uh, I wish you all the best uh, to all the professionals. Uh, why? Because uh, the new financial year is started 24-25. I wish you all the best uh, to all the professionals. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, I'm uh, over to the BFF board officials. Please unmute. Please unmute, madam. 
So now audible, sir. Hello. Yeah, please. Yes. Uh, so before we go for the question answer session, I would request our chairman, <coughs> sir, Sime Chitranjan Chattopadhyay, sir, for his address. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam uh, Indrakshi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, respected participants, and the yes, speaker of this day, Dr. CMA P. Sivarama Prasad. First of all, I convey my you know, heartfelt uh, thanks to my president and vice president and entire council member for uh, you know, continuously uh, having their support with us for holding such program especially in the webinar form and uh, that too also the and the subject topics like responsibility financing. In fact, when we are listening from Dr. Prasad, we could understand that uh, economic growth that comprises on environmental and social well-being becomes uh, lopsided and unstable. As you know, an unstable, uh, stable and uh, inclusive economy thus depends very much on how robust and responsible is the mobilization and allocation of capital, the key functions of the finance sector. And the financial institutions therefore can no longer ignore the imperatives of sustainable development as reflected in issues like climate change, water conservations, poverty reduction, then your energy efficiency, social inclusion and uh, innovation as they become increasingly central to the you know to manage the competitions business continuity customers demand and regulatory requirements so all these have been dealt by dr p sibonovs in a very you know, i should say it's a very such a lucid manner and proactive steps by financial institutions can lead the way as we have learned from dr prasad and inform and help operationalize india's uh, sustainable and inclusive development objectives besides enhancing the performance of financial institutions themselves. To this end, the National Voluntary Guidelines for Responsible Financing Development by the Indian Bank Association through a process of consultations with uh, financial institutions provide a systematic standardized framework of action uh, catering to the banking sector's risks, opportunities and responsibilities around environment social and economic factor, factors in an integrated manner. Responsible finance, as we have learned from Dr. Prasad, is all about good governance, strong emphasis on capital preservations, and as quality, effective risk management, and proactive social and environmental intervention through investment and lending. All the four components are intrinsic to a financial institution's business, of course, and here RF, that is responsible business, responsible finance requires integrating environmental, social and governmental risk, that is ESG risk management into an FI's business strategy, decision making process and operations. And by doing so, we could learn that an FI attains a stable balance between earnings and risk on the one hand, and the other hand, the use of ESG parameters opens up new growth and investment opportunities. In the ultimate analysis, we could learn from Dr. Prasad, this is key to financial institutions serving the real economy, one that is people focused, has the capacity to absorb external shocks and is sustainable. We have learned that responsible finance provides a framework that taps the huge twin potential of the financial sector for its growth and development impact, where our CMAs have got a great role to play because CMAs are concerned both way the finance and non-finance parameters. And non-financial parameters are playing a major role as he has dealt through his slides that how the key performance index and others are very much should be robust so far as the analyzing analysis of the financial model and, and the, the banking finance and the investment all will depend upon the nitty-gritty of the you know that ESG risk analysis, as also the responsibility financing will be one of the pillar, rather the key focused area in the coming century, where the art one would be, you know, the our people, planet and profit motive, where the art, the planet should be a sustainable planet 
where we can have a happy life. Therefore, I under this, you know, this total program, I understand that there is a huge, you know, response we are receiving from the members and non-members also. Many of the members may not have been able to attend this program, but we assure them the whole program will be telecasted to our YouTube channel also. You'll be getting it. But by this time, I just want to mention everybody that please keep on track with our BFSI board's many programs we'll be bringing in life. And I'm sure that you'll be enjoying every webinar the way it is being organized by your department. I thank my departmental colleagues, those who are continuously trying with the limited resource. They are doing all these excellent jobs. And with this, I hand over the session to Indrakshi ma'am for a question answer session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So we have now the question answer session now. So, uh, first question uh, to our uh, to Sivara Prasad, sir. Do the green financing norms issued by RBI apply to small borrowers also? Which are trading agencies recognized <laughs> by the banks? Not the small borrowers at present. First, we will concentrate on project financing. That is a large scale advance. Over a period of time, it will extend to the small borrowers also. Okay. Which are the green rating agencies recognized by the banks? Which are the green? Green rating agencies. Ah, green rating agencies in India. It is worldwide, it is there, but India is not at a pop up with the green rating agencies as on date. If the banks are sanctioning for hydro projects, in hydro projects there will be deforestation. The same will have effect on environment. Then on what basis banks will provide the loans to the hydro projects? Actually here, whether it is a hydro or thermal project, whatever the emissions they are going to create, that is to be compensated with the help of developing agrarian in the particular vicinity. So to compensate, that's why it is called a net zero emissions. Whatever the emissions they are going to create, and if at all they developed any greenery in that particular area, and it set off the carbon emissions, then it is not a problem. But whether it is a hydro or thermal, whatever it is. Is there any ESG rating criteria like CBIL for credit rating? What, madam? Is there any ESG rating criteria like CBIL? Ah, uh, rating. Uh, rating. Madam, I hear now the subject is evolving stage. Even uh, I told about the rating agency, worldwide good rating agencies are there, right? but in India it is not developed. Right? Then it is a good scope for. Uh, uh, good rating agencies, they are going to enter into Indian market also because uh, the SEBI is also implemented and uh, the Reserve Bank of India also implemented. There is a lot of uh, scope and opportunities uh, for green rating agencies uh, in India like uh, SEBIL or and, uh, like uh, uh, Crystal or ICRA type uh, that rating agencies are going to start in India. But this uh, civil or ICRA, they will also going to enhance their particular services in grain rating also. But as on beta, it is not a, it is a, in the evolving stage. In the coming days, this will happen. Down the line, one oblique, two years. Uh, technological development is acting as counter force for the environmental issues. Uh, this appears to be the reality. So your comments, please, on this. Technological, what, devel technological development uh, uh. is acting as counter force for environmental issues. This appears to be a reality. So your comments on this uh, question. Uh, <laughs> technology issues, particularly technology development will not be hampered hamper to the ESG. 
because um, whatever the technology take for example technology mobile banking is there that is called uh, m commerce that is uh, development is happening upa it is also development this will not interrupt the esgs but uh, environmental problems will, it will not uh, create any problem so the mobile banking on account of mobile banking that is a technology development uh, the esg carbon levels particularly the environmental problems are reduced drastically earlier take for example to issue the pin personal index number the personal pin number or vote uh, the uh, the personal index number uh, particularly the atms and all these things uh, they send by post and a lot of uh, paper is wasted today that is not happening the pin number is uh, generated from your own mobile uh, there by the postal covers uh, the printing of that covers all are reduced and the technology development the cloud computing is a technology development so early uh, in state bank of india 28000 uh, 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 the servers are there now only one server 28000 rooms uh, and the air condition the system room all are created lot of emissions now on account of cloud computing that is emissions are drastically reduced technology will not an interrupt for the creation of emissions okay sir uh, national highways cutting lakhs of trees for construction of highways however they are also planting and maintaining the trees so sir how to address on this issue ah uh, correct But uh, at the <laughs> okay, national highways, uh, they are uh, for uh, the eight lines or uh, six lines they are creating. Correct, that is correct. Uh, but at the same time, uh, surrounding to that particular uh, highways, uh, they are planting the tree shops. They are planting the tree shops. Okay, one side they are cutting the trees. Second side they are planting the trees also. That will be compensated. That will be compensated. can financial institutions play a proactive role by offering technical expertise to msme business to reduce carbon footprints i could not can catch it can financial institutions can financial institutions play a proactive role by offering technical expertise to msme business to reduce carbon footprints Mm, yes madam even uh, actually uh, at the last i told about uh, the financial institutions uh, they are not expertise particularly this uh, environmental issues a lot of uh, technicalities are involved that's why i told about esg matrix esg matrix is uh, to be developed and already developed for each and every industry like a textile industry or sugar industry or chemical industry or a power sector like that for all industries the esg matrix already developed once the banks are going to give the loan this is to be verified this matrix is to be verified by external people so definitely it may it is an opportunity to the professionals it is not as, take for example the our cms uh, they are experts in uh, cost audit particularly in the production department in the production department or other ancillaries are also they are well aware of uh, the total system of the process for them it is not a big issue for them. it is not a big issue for them uh sir uh, this is the last question we are taking for today uh, kindly explain the recently introduced european carbon tax measures and our indian government counter measures against the carbon tax mm, that is a big subject madam it will take a lot of time okay next time we will discuss about that okay sir so thank you so this with this we have come to the close of this question answer part So now I would uh, request uh, our HOD sir, CMA Dibendu Roy sir, additional director and HOD of the BFSI Board of the Institute of Cost Accountants of India for the vote of thanks. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, Indrakshi. Good evening to all. We thank our learned speaker, CMA Doctor 
P.C. Varma Prasad, former AGM, State Bank of India, for conceiving today's webinar and deliberating on the topic of innovative topic of responsible financing. We also thank our chairman, CMA Chitranjan Chattopadhyay, and other members of the BFSI board for their continuous support for our activities. We also thank CMA Ashwinji Dalwadi, our president ICMAI, and CMA BB Nayak, vice president, and all others for their guidance and support. I also thank our BFSI team members, CEP department, IT department, for enabling today's webinar in this online forum. We are having our next webinar on 26th April from 4 to 6 p.m. on the topic of Basel 3 and 4, norms for resilience of banking sector. And the speaker is Sri Govind Gurnani, who is the former AGM of Reserve Bank of India. We wish your participation for the event and other events which the BFSI department is conducting in the coming days. With this, we close today's session. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.